Vale. Thank you. My name is Dani Fojo and I did this bachelor thesis with Victor Campos and Xavier Giro y Nieto on uh, reproducing and analyzing adaptive computation time in PyTorch and TensorFlow. This is the outline. First, a motivation. Why do we need adaptive computation time? The complexity of posing a problem is not always the same as the complexity of solving it. For example, Fermat put his conjecture in a margin of a book and we took 350 years and a lot of mathematicians to solve it. In neural networks, the, the difficulty of solving an input can change a lot from the size of that input. And uh, for solving it, for example, a, sim a too simple neural network would have problems to solve the inputs that are too complex. And a too simple, a too complex neural network will have will waste resources on the very, si the very simple inputs. Another problem with the complex neural networks could be that they are more prone to overfitting. So some related work that also tried variable computation are, for example, spatially adaptive computation time for residual networks, which are a kind of convolutional neural networks that analyze images and they are capable of stopping the computation early. An image, uh, each patch of the image doesn't have to go through the whole network. Another example of variable computation uh, for recurrent neural networks are LSTM jump and SkipRNN, which are capable of not looking at all the samples of a sequence. They can decide if, a, if they need to look at each sample or not to get the output. One of the more promising works on additive computation time is the one that we worked on, which is additive computation time for recurrent neural networks from Alex Graves, who is a researcher at Google Brain. But the main problems with this work was that there was only a preprint on archive, on archive and there was no source code, so we had to implement it ourselves. Now we will go an overview of adaptive computation time. First, consider a very simple recurrent neural network. A recurrent neural network is a network that processes a, sequences, a sequence of inputs. At each input, at each time step, it gets an input and it, get, and it processes a state and an output. The state depends on the last state, and the output depends on the current state. This would be the equations. They are similar to a dynamic system state with a, st with a state. Now, additive computation time is capable of looking at each input more than once, and it can learn how many times it should look at each input. This would be a simple schematic, more or less. So the main idea is that when an input first enters the network, it works just normally, but then it looks at that input more than once using the same hidden state that it processed the last time. And you also get uh, an output at each ponder step. Each step upwards in this network is called a ponder step. This x n is just a binary flag at the beginning of the vector, which indicates if it's the first time or not that the network sees that input. Then, at each step, we calculate the halting probability, which is calculated from the from the state, and it comes from a sigmoid, so it's a number between zero and one. This is a plot from a sigmoid. And when those probabilities add up to one, then the network stops computing, and it gets the next input. This would be the equation. The one minus epsilon is because a sigmoid always gives numbers between zero and one, so it could never stop in just one step. So we add the minus epsilon, so it can stop in one. 
then to end we define the residual which would be one minus all the probabilities except the last one and we, and we redefine the last probability to be the residual and with that we get, we get a probability distribution so the probabilities add up to one and we define the outputs which are just weighted sums of the outputs at each step that you can see here. Then, how we, do we limit the computation? Because we don't want a network to look at each step 100 times. So we will define the ponder cost, which will be at each time step, the amount of times it looked, the network looked at the input, and the residual. And then we add that ponder cost to the loss. We add a constant, which we will call time penalty, to scale that ponder cost with the normal loss. Then, why does this work? <laughs> because it's not clear that this ponder cost minimizes the amount of times the network looks at its input. So, basically, if you write the ponder cost at each step, it's, this, it's of this form. The first part is just constant, so it doesn't matter in the loss function. And the second part are the, neg the probabilities with negative sign. This means that when we are minimizing the loss, we are actually maximizing the halting probabilities. So we are maximizing the probability to stop, and that makes the network stop earlier. Another way to limit computation is to just put a maximum computation and define the amount of steps as the minimum between that maximum computation m, which can be, for example, 20, and what we had earlier. So uh, we had to implement the adaptive computation time by ourselves. Our first approach was to use PyTorch. We, the idea behind using Bytorch was it has a dynamic graph, which means that the computation graph can change dynamically. So we are doing a work on active computation time, the network has to adapt to the inputs. The cons were Pytorch is in version beta 0.2. So now there are a lot of functions with, that are lacking documentation, and the main problem was that it was too slow. So after implementing it, we could not use it because our training could take 40 days. So we had to change to, we had to change to TensorFlow. TensorFlow is in version 1.4, it's a much mature framework. It has much better docs and it worked much faster. The problem where TensorFlow works with a static graph, so implementing an adaptive network in TensorFlow is much harder. But we ended up doing it, and it worked, it worked much faster, and we could work. <laughs> Since there were no implementation of adaptive computation time in PyTorch, and there, there is one in, oh, in TensorFlow, but it doesn't really work really well, we put all our implementations publicly and open in GitHub, and that's a link. Then we had to try our network. So to test ACT in the original paper, they just compared it to a simple recurrent neural network. We decided that that was not fair, that adaptive computation time looks at each input more than once, but a simple recurrent neural network looks at each input once. So we had to design a new baseline to make a fair comparison. We decided that we could fix a number and repeat each input of the sequence that number of times. For example, here we're repeating each input three times. You can see the vector 1, 2, 3, 3, 4. Here's 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, etc. And we also decided to add a binary flag, as they did in, in the original paper, that tells the network when 
it's it is seeing a new input, original input. So the exp one of the experiments we did was parity, which consists on finding the parity of a vector. That means the vector has the first part made of ones and minus ones, and the second part all of zeros, and has to decide if there are an even number of ones or an odd number of ones. If there is an even number, it has to output a zero. If it's an odd number, it has to output a one. This task was actually not recurrent. All the, all the vector is fed to the network at once. So the sequence is of length one. But since we are using additive computation times that repeats input, or in our baseline we're fixing a number of times, the sequence, it has more than, more than one input. First, we tried to solve this task using our implementation of additive computation time. And here's a graph of the accuracy, which is the how many how many inputs it solved correctly uh, over all the inputs, and a graph of the ponder, which is the amount of the amount of times it looked at each input plus the residual. So a ponder of 2.5 means it looked at each input twice. Here we can see that our implementation works. Without out of computation time, the network is kind of learning, but it doesn't even get to 100% accuracy. When we are using out of computation time, it gets to 100% really fast. But then we decided to try with our new baseline, repeating inputs, and here we can see that Repeating one input is basically like doing nothing, so it doesn't learn. But if we repeat it, if we repeat the input just twice, the network basically gets to 100% accuracy really fast. And if we repeat it more times, it learns even faster. We also can see that if we repeat the inputs too many times, maybe about nine in this graph, we see instabilities. That so the network learns and then unlearns and the accuracy decreases. This is probably caused by exploding gradients because the sequence is too long and it's a known problem in recurrent neural networks when the sequences are too long. This is a comparison between active computation time and our new baseline. We can see that actually our baseline learned faster than additive computation time. So the, the, to the right there is how many times it looked at each input. And we can see that additive computation times learns to look more or less twice always. And just by repeating each input twice, but a fixed amount of times, we learned faster than additive computation time. Since all all the networks were able to solve the problem, we decided that a good comparison would be how fast they solved it. The other task that we decided to try was the addition task, which it, this one is actually sequential, so there is more than one input fed to the network, and the task consists in adding all the numbers that are fed accumulatively. So, the second output would be the first one plus the second one. The third output would be the first plus the second plus the third one. And this means that the network has to have a coherent hidden state and has to remember how the sum at each step. This task may look too easy because a network has matrix multiplication and it can just add numbers, but to make it more difficult, each digit of the numbers were, was fed as a one-hot encoding, which is basically this. For example, two has a one in the position two of a vector, and all the rest of the vector is, uh, is made of zeros. So then the network could not just add numbers. It had to learn how to add numbers, and it had to have memory. This made the task much harder. This is the the performance of active computation time. 
we can see again that it works without applying additive computation time. The network basically just gets to 40% accuracy. But applying additive computation time with a correct choice of the time penalty, it can get to 100% accuracy. So the network is learning how to solve this problem. We also were curious to see how many times it looked at its input from the sequence. What we found was it was barely not looking the first input and looking much more to all the rest. Our hypothesis of why this is happening is because the first hidden state was not learned, was just all zeros. So that had a bias and made the ponder much lower. Then we tested our new baseline in this, in this task and we saw that it also was able to learn. Again, with just one repetition, it's basically the same task, the task without the ACT, so it got to 40% accuracy, but by applying more repetitions, the network was able to learn. And we see again that with too many repetitions, there are instabilities, but actually, if we compare both, we see that now, there are even, if we, with less repetitions than active computation time, we're able to learn faster. This was really surprising. And we saw that here we thought that maybe adaptive computation time is not learning how many times it should look at each input. So the conclusions are that we implemented adaptive computation time in two of the most used frameworks and we published it so people could use it. We analyzed how adaptive computation time is, works and we tested against our new baseline and saw that maybe it isn't working as well as it seems and that by just repeating each input we can get a really good accuracy on these two tasks that we tried. Yeah, that's it. Thank you.